with the crow. In this video, we're going to look at a new type of series that we haven't seen before and develop a test for convergence for those types of series. So all of our tests so far only work for series with positive terms. We had the integral test, we had the direct comparison test or just the comparison test, we had the limit comparison test. All of those work only when we have a series with positive terms. So what if we have series with negative terms? What can we do about that? Let's start with an example. We're really familiar with the harmonic series. It has all positive terms and we know that it is divergent. But what if every other term were negative? What if I started with a positive one, then when it had a negative half, then positive one third, then negative one fourth, then add a fifth, subtract a sixth, and so on. I could write that in the following format. I could say that's the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one raised to the power of n minus one times one over n. Because remember, negative one raised to an even power will give me a negative one, and negative one raised to an odd power will give me a, I said that wrong. Negative one raised to an even power will give me positive one. Negative one raised to an odd power will give me negative one. Right, so that's why I have to have n minus one because I want the first term to be raised to the power of zero. And in the second term, I want negative one raised to the power of one and so on. This series is very famous. It is called the alternating harmonic series. So let's notice a few things about this, that if I look at the partial sums, I start off with one, I subtract a half. So I go down, then I go back up, but I go, don't go back up all the way. The amount that I add back in is smaller than the amount that I had just subtracted. So the largest partial sum is going to be just the first partial sum, which is one. After that, the partial sums get smaller. In fact, if I say, well, the second partial sum is one half, I do get bigger than one half, I add a third, but then I actually never get smaller than one half because when I subtract a fourth, a fourth is smaller than a third, so I never get back to one half, and then I'm gonna add some more and then subtract a little bit less and so on. And so my partial sums are uh, bounded between one half and one for all values of n, uh, at least, uh, no, for all values of n. So this sequence of partial sums is bounded. So let's just look at the even numbered partial sums. Uh, so S sub two is, well, one minus a half, and that's just gonna be a half. S sub four, uh, I get one minus a half, then a third minus a fourth, that's a half plus a twelfth. S sub six, I have the same one minus a half, a third minus a fourth, and then a fifth minus a sixth. And if I look at these pairwise, I get a half plus a twelfth plus a thirtieth. In fact, as I continue, I can see that each pair here is going to be positive. That's why I'm looking at the even numbered partial sum. So I get these pairs, which show me that the even numbered partial sum is going to be positive. So I'll always be adding as I add 
include two more terms, that's going to be a positive number. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I'll get an increasing sequence. So I've got a sequence of even numbered partial sums, which is bounded and monotonic. Remember, monotonic means either increasing or decreasing. So it's bounded and increasing. It must be convergent. So the limit of those even numbered partial sums is some number beta. Now that's enough, not enough, to conclude that the all of the uh, sequences of partial sums will have the same limit value or that limit will exist. But at least for the even numbered partial sums, we know that we have a convergent sequence. So let's look at the odd partial sums. If the odd partial sums are convergent to the same value, then we can conclude that the uh, sequence of all the partial sums is convergent to the same value, and then the series will be convergent. Well, the odd partial sum can be written as the sum of an, the next even partial sum plus the term 1 over 2k. Uh, let's look at an example, right? The fifth partial sum, so that's an odd partial sum, is 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth. To get to the next even partial sum, I'll need to subtract a sixth. And so the connection between s sub 5 and s sub 6 is that s sub 5 is the same as s sub 6 plus 1 over 6. So that's what this is saying here. But that means if I take the limit of the sequence of odd numbered partial sums, then I can write that as the limit of the sum of these two terms, but these two sequences are both convergent, so I can use my limit laws and break that up into two separate limits. And I know the limit for each of those uh, sequences. For the even numbered partial sums, the limit is beta, and of course the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over 2k is 0. So I can see that the odd numbered partial sums also converge, and they converge to the same number. So my conclusion is that the alternating harmonic series is converging. So alternating series in general, we call an alternating series, or a series, an alternating series if every other term is positive and every other term is negative. So the sign between the terms alternates between positive and negative. So we usually write it in this way, but um, that is really only true if the first term is positive. We could also write it this way if the first term is negative. Any results that we state, any theorems or tests we develop, where we write it using one way or the other is going to be valid for the other way of writing it as well. And in both ways of writing it, the terms b sub n, so the terms of the sequence b sub n, are going to be all positive. We let the negative 1 raised to the power of n minus 1 take care of the alternating signs. And then we consider the b sub n's as positive terms. So now we've got the alternating series test. If we think about our example, what were the conditions that needed to be satisfied in general? Well, we needed to have the b sub n, so the positive part. So if we just change the uh, all of the terms to have positive signs, we need to have decreasing terms. 
And not only do they have to be decreasing, but their limit has to be zero. So if we have both of those situations, then uh, all of our terms are consistently decreasing and the limit is zero, then we can conclude that the alternating series is convergent. In addition, alternating series have a very simple bound on their remainder. Remember the remainder is the difference between the full sum and the nth partial sum. And that is bounded by the next term in the uh, series. You know, the absolute value of it. We, we're going to have a, a bound on the absolute value of the remainder because the remainder could be positive or negative. So in absolute value, the remainder is less than the absolute value of the n plus first term. So let's look at some examples. We're going to test the following series for convergence or divergence. The first one, we have an alternating series. Uh, it is, uh, the terms are based on the arctan function. So remind ourselves what the arctan function looks like, in particular, as x goes to infinity, arctan of x gets closer and closer to pi over 2. Uh, so in this case, it's pretty clear that we've, we're failing both conditions needed for convergence for the alternating series test. Um, that the arctan of n plus 1 is actually greater than the arctan of n, and uh, the limit is pi over 2. It's not 0. And so really, this fails the test for, uh, you know, we can use the test for divergence. This series is divergent by using the test for uh, divergence. Um, all right, well, let's look at a more reasonable series. Suppose that uh, instead of having arctan of n, I have pi over 2 minus arctan of n. Now, this one has a chance of being convergent because we can see that the difference between pi over 2 and arctan of x is getting smaller as x goes to infinity. And so the question is, is it getting small enough? Um, and uh, when I have this alternating series, well, um, we can see that since it is getting smaller, we can say we have a, the decreasing portion is satisfied. And the limit is also going to be 0. So by the alternating series test, this series is going to be convergent. So here I have a series which looks like, well, is this even an alternating series? I don't see the negative 1 raised to the power of n or negative 1 raised to the power of n minus 1. But I do have cosine of pi times n, so cosine of an integer multiple of pi. And remember that cosine of an integer multiple of pi is 1 if n is even. So cosine of 2 pi equals 1, cosine of 4 pi equals 1. But cosine of pi n is negative 1 is, of n is odd. So cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 3 pi is negative 1, and so on. So really, that's taking the place of the negative 1 raised to the power of n minus 1. So we have an alternating series here. And we can see that uh, 1 over radical n plus 1 is less than 1 over radical n. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over radical n is 0. So we can use the alternating series test to conclude that this series is convergent. So in our next example, we're going to see that the alternating harmonic series is an exceptional case in the sense that we can actually calculate its sum. We know it's convergent, but we can actually calculate the value to which it converges. So to do that, we're going to just look at the 
the relationship between the nth partial sum of the alternating harmonic series, we'll call that S sub n, and the nth partial sum of the harmonic series, and we'll call that H sub n. What's the connection between those partial sums? Well, let's just look at the eighth partial sum of the harmonic series and the fourth partial sum of the harmonic series, what we are calling h sub 8 and h sub 4. If I subtract those two, and I'm going to subtract them in the following way. So I'm going to take h sub 8 minus h sub 4. I'm going to leave all of the odd numbered terms as they are, and I'll take the 1 half, I'll subtract the 1, I'll take the 1 fourth, and subtract the 1 half, 1 sixth, and subtract the 1 third, and 1 eighth, and subtract the 1 fourth. And I can continue to do that no matter how big I take my partial sums. For the even numbers, um, I'm always going to subtract twice its value from the even number term. So I'm try, subtracting one half from one fourth, and one half is twice of one fourth. One third is subtracted from one sixth. One third is twice of one sixth, which means that, hey, every other term is going to be negative. And in fact, I'll have one, and I'll get minus a half plus a third, minus a fourth, plus a fifth, minus a sixth, plus a seventh, minus an eighth. Well, hey, that is just the eighth partial sum from my alternating harmonic series. And there's nothing special about uh, you know, four and eight. In general, if I look, if I let n, well, I want to look at uh, even numbered partial sum. So that's why I have two n here. So choose a value for n, we have this relationship holding. All right. Now, whenever I'm working with the uh, harmonic series, and I'm not quite sure what to do next, it's always good to think about the integral test and compare the integral of 1 over x to the partial sums uh, of our harmonic series. So these rectangles, for example, uh, would represent, this would be one plus a half plus a third. This would, the area under all three rectangles represents uh, the third partial sum h sub three. And if I were to compare that to the integral of well 1 to n of 1 over x. Now to be clear, let me let me clarify what it is that we're comparing here because sometimes we get lost because the upper bound on the integral is n, the index on the uh, partial sum is also n. But what really what we're comparing here, Let me just see here if I've got this correct, right. So if I work that out, I'll come, I'll, I'm able to conclude that the nth partial sum of the harmonic series is bigger than natural log of n. Well, natural log of two is just this shaded area right here. The second partial sum of the harmonic series is the area of both these rectangles. So what I'm comparing is not the area under one rectangle or you know, two rectangles compared to the area under the curve. I'm looking at the area of the rectangles compared to the area under the uh, previous part of the curve. And so maybe I should do um, the next one, partial sum as well. So let me go ahead and copy this. 
and show you what I mean then. I add in the next bit. Now the area is not the natural log of two, the area under that shaded part is the natural log of three. But the third partial sum of the harmonic series is all three rectangles. So in the in my diagram here, or my thought process, um, my partial sum always includes one more rectangle than the part, the corresponding part under the curve. So let's call the difference between the nth partial sum of the harmonic series and natural log of n as a new sequence, we'll call it t sub n. And we can show that this t sub n is decreasing. And the way we'll do that is we'll just look at the difference between t sub n plus one and t sub n. So just using the definition here. And now what I'm gonna do is rearrange some terms. I know that h sub n plus one minus h sub n. So think about it this way. If I had h sub three minus h sub two, what would be left? It would just be one over three. So that's just going to be one over n plus one. Here, I'm going to have a positive natural log of n minus the natural log of n plus one. So that I can combine as a single term of natural log of n over the uh, n plus one. And then the one over n plus one is the difference between h of n plus one and h of n. Well, what does this represent in terms of an integral? Again, this would be the natural log of n minus the natural log of n plus one. If I had my integral from one over x, that would mean the bound, the top bound would be n and the bottom bound would be n plus one. Well, I don't like to have the bottom bound larger than the top bound. So I'll put a minus sign in front of that and swap the bounds. So now natural log of n over n plus one is the same as negative integral from n to n plus one of one over x dx. And what can I say about that? Well, um, I claim that that's negative. And again, the picture really helps us. One over n plus one would be one third. That would represent for when n equals two, right? When n equals two, I'm just going to have one third. That is starting on my graph where x equals three drawing a rectangle off to the right with a width of one, that would give me my one third. But the integral is actually the area under the curve in the previous rectangle. So I'm going from the integral from two to three, one over x dx, that's this green shaded part. So the green shaded part is always going to be larger than the red shaded part. And so if I take the red and subtract the green, I'm going to get a negative number. So my T sub n is decreasing. It's bounded. So it has a limit or its limit equals some finite number. And we'll call that gamma. So what do we know so far? We know that there's a connection between the partial sums of the regular harmonic series and the alternating harmonic series. We know that the nth partial sum of the harmonic series 
uh, is uh, bigger than the natural log of n, and in fact, but that difference is decreasing. And so the limit as n goes to infinity of t sub n is gamma. And we can also say that the limit as n goes to infinity of the uh, even numbered terms of t sub n, which would be the even numbered terms, I'm sorry, the even numbered partial sums of the harmonic series minus natural log of 2 sub n, I mean 2n, uh, that's also going to be the same limit value gamma. So now we're, we're going to be there. We're going to show what the sum of the alternating harmonic series is. So we're going to do that by looking at the limit of just the even numbered partial sums. And you say, well, wait a minute, what about the odd numbered partial sums? Well, we don't have to consider them because uh, at this point, we already know that the series is convergent. We're just trying to calculate the value. And so the value of the limit of the even numbered partial sum has to equal the value of the limit of all of the partial sums or of the odd numbered partial sums or of you know, the sequence of every third partial sums. They all have to equal the same thing because we've established that the series is convergent. So the limit of the sequence of the partial sums must also be convergent. So what am I going to do? Well, this is a kind of common trick that we do in analysis. I'm going to take h sub 2n, and I'm just going to subtract natural log of n and add natural log of n. That doesn't change it because I'm just adding zero. And I'll do the same thing with the h sub n. Uh, I will subtract natural log of n and I'll add natural log of n. So I, I didn't really change anything. I just wrote it in a different way, which is going to be useful because why? I have uh, some information about the difference between h sub n and the natural log of n. And the difference between h sub 2n and the natural log of 2n. I know those limit values. So let me rearrange this. Because I know that these are convergent sequences, uh, then I can split this up into multiple limits. And remember, you can only use those limit laws when you know that you have convergent sequences. And that's what we established, that we have convergent sequences for both h sub 2n minus the natural log of 2n and h sub n minus the natural log of n. So let's go through this one step at a time then, or one term at a time. The limit as n goes to infinity of h sub 2n minus the natural log of 2n, we've established that that equals gamma. Now I have to subtract off the limit as n goes to infinity of h sub n minus natural log of n. Well, that's just the definition of tn, and the limit is also gamma. Now, natural log of 2n, that is uh, maybe not as clear as I imply here. Um, but what I can do is fix this starting from now and going back and fixing the other ones later. Try this one more time. It's really, I should be looking at this limit value, but it's really, I said, I was 
considering it as a constant without showing all the work as to why I should consider this a constant. And the reason why I should consider this a constant is because natural log of 2n is going to be so. Let me do this correctly here. That's really just the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of n. And then I still have to subtract off the natural log of n. So really, this last bit was a constant term. It was just the constant natural log of 2. So I apologize for that bit of sloppiness, because really the conclusion should have been then that I just get natural log of uh, 2 out of that. But the limit value then is the natural log of 2. So that's what I'm looking for. The limit of the sequence of the even numbered partial sums is natural log of 2. It is a convergence series, so that means the series itself must converge to natural log of 2. So we have found the sum of the alternating harmonic series. It is natural log of 2.